Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits and welcome to my channel. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week I've got a fun project that is just therapeutic and simple, basic. I worked on it on my desk in my studio in about this much space and I had a wonderful afternoon just being creative with postage stamps and a little disc bound journal. So if you've got a few minutes, let's flip this camera around and check it out. So today I'm in the inside studio uh, in my small space on my small desk and I have been spending the last several hours really thoroughly enjoying creating this little journal, creating pages in this little journal. I started off thinking, what am I going to do um, for this project? Well, let me back up. Let me back up. So this is... A Joggles Disc Bound Journal. They come in many shapes and sizes and you can put them together also with many surfaces of paper. So the black smooth and sturdy, the Strathmore watercolor paper, the wet cement, um, the craft paper, um, circle, little circles, small squares, um, little ovals, and they're all punched in a way that fits on to these discs. So it's super cool for someone like me because I like to mix up the sizes of the pages, the shapes and the colors. I don't want the whole thing to be just one, but you could make a whole little circular journal with multiple pages of different um, surfaces or all one, or you could make yourself a little tiny square journal. The options are kind of endless. You could make yourself a completely same surface six by six journal. Journal. So there's lots of creative options and they all come together with these little discs, which are rather ingenious. They're just little plastic discs with a ridge around both edges like that. And that is what the pages clip onto. So for example, if you wanted to make a little book of all these little oval pages, um, I don't know if you can get them all in there at once, probably not, but you just take them and you pop them onto the disc and you start with your front and your back page first and then you add the pages in the middle. And the nicest thing about this really overall is that I create the pages flat. So I just sit here on my desk and create a page flat flat on the desk. And if it doesn't come out amazing, then I don't include it. And I don't have to feel like I have to rip it out. I get to do whatever I want with it. And then when it's good, I add it into the book. So it's been very relaxing because I am just here making pages. And if I like them, I add them to the book. And if I don't like them, I consider them experience. So that's how the system works with the pages and the discs. And all the pages um, are sturdy. They're like cardstock. They're heavy duty. So they're, they can be taken in and out of the discs and they can take a lot of mixed media. They can take a lot of gluing and layering and wet media. I've used in here, I've used fluid acrylics, I've used watercolor, I've used Derwent ink tents pencils, I've used Posca paint pens, I've used matte medium, I've used all kinds of stuff. So let me zoom in on this and show you, let's see, get a little bit out, there we go. And I'm going to show you what I've got so far. And um, I decided that what I wanted rather than a whole bunch of random pages was a theme. So my theme is postage stamps. I know that you're probably like me. You've probably got boxes of postage stamps around. Um, I have boxes of postage stamps. I have stuff like this. Um, if you don't have that, you can get them. You can buy them. You can buy postage stamps um, off the paper, and um, and when I when they say off paper, that means they're steamed off. They they may be canceled stamps. Lots of them are, but they don't have any envelope paper on the back, and that's what you want because you don't want the envelope paper. You don't want to have to take it off, and when you glue it down, sometimes the envelope paper sticks, but the stamp is not sturdy, and you get the edges. So you don't really want to have papers. Uh, 
stamps like this, I mean, unless you want to include that cancellation mark, but for the most part, I like them off paper. So I'm going to provide links for resources below for all of these pro products, um, but here we go. So I made my cover out of brown craft um, and the six by six. So my whole overall book is six by six, although I included multiple inside pages. So this is the six by six brown craft, and that's what I did with the cover, and I just did a collage of postage stamps because this whole book is going to be inspired by postage stamps. So on the inside page, I used my Tim Holtz postcard stamp. Um, I have uh, a whole collection of different vintage postcard marks, and I like using that in with the stamps. This is um, from a old, old, old nursery rhyme book. This is called Best Love Nursery Rhymes. Um, this was a book that was read to me as a child. Um, yes, I did rip up my childhood book, but I love it so much. I've bought several more on eBay. So if you're looking to buy it, it or to get it at a tag sale, yard sale, this is what it is. Best Love Nursery Rhymes and Songs. It's got some great stuff in it. So this one, this first page is the um, Baba Black Sheep. So I took the page out of the book and I glued it, um, I adhered it with Joggle's Sticky Stuff sheets to the full page of the six by six. And then I gave each person a postage stamp head. So the, um, the master, the dame, and the little boy that lives down the lane all have heads with postage stamps. I drew in a couple of little butterflies and I made sure to include these very cool old vintage illustrations from that book. And I cut up the poem so that it would fit in the negative space right there or a verse of the poem. Um, and I love that. That was the first page that I made and I was so excited that I knew I was going to be in my inside studio all day. I just watched a video with Eric Carle, and Eric Carle said that when he was painting and creating collages, he stepped into another world where nothing else mattered, where he was relaxed and creative and everything else melted away. And I'm going to say that's exactly what happened to me with this journal today. So if you're looking for a little art therapy, a little escape uh, from your everyday life that you can do in a small space, I'm right on my desk here. This is a beautiful thing. So I, um, so my next page, I did another collage of postage stamps, but I did it over an old encyclopedia page that has some botanical illustrations. I included a cancellation mark, and my stamps are not just U.S., they're international, and I liked the printed background for that one. This page was a lot of fun. This page, I found an old address envelope that had a lot of negative space at the top and, of course, a stamp. And then I used the cancellation mark right here to be the center of my daisy drawing, which went right off the envelope and onto the wet cement page. And I did that also with the petals right off onto, the, onto the, um, that beautiful gray color. So that was a lot of fun. This is a really old postmark. I think, let's see what it says. Uh, 1959. So that was um, that was kind of neat to include in there and make it into some artwork uh, to preserve it and give it new life. Now this one I used the um, the watercolor paper, the the heavy duty um, watercolor paper, and I cut it. But I made sure I did a die cut of a bird on a branch, but I made sure to hit. Um, at least three places where it could be bound in. So how cool is that? I just I just cut it out of the six by six page and then I added the stamps to the whole surface and I've created this beautiful die cut uh, in my book. So, and I decided to back him up with a plain sheet so that it wasn't too busy. Um, I thought that looked nice that he was backed up with a plain sheet, but he is flippable on his own. So the next one is a spread. This was a lot of fun. I had this great big Queen Elizabeth stamp. And I find that Queen Elizabeth is one of the very few stamps with women's heads on them. I've got lots of men. I've got Churchill. I've got Abraham Lincoln. I've got George Washington. I've got, who is this? I don't know, one cent man. I've got another man, another one cent man. And what else? I've got another, a two cent man. That might be Washington as well. I've got a baseball playing man. But where are the women? Where are the women? 
well, I've got a few women down here, but the key is uh, to get the head to be about the right size for what you're putting it on. So these women down here are um, very small. Uh, there's a, a man there and a man there, Queen Elizabeth there, and I'm not sure who this is, but their heads were all very small. So I put them over here to pick up the pink from this side, and I put two brown craft sheets across from each other. This was a lot of fun. I made packages out of the postage stamps. The first one I drew and then I added one, then I added the ribbon to the other one. So she's carrying some packages and um, then I extended the horizon and the clouds uh, across to the other side and brought some pink over here. Uh, this was a super fun one. I really enjoyed creating the drawn body with the postage head. So um, and then the next one, I took that step even a little further. This is a fun page, a fun spread. This is a Republic of Guinea stamp with this very colorful, beautiful woman. This is one of the very, very few I had in my collection like that. And so I cut a piece of collage paper to create a dress for her. And then I mimicked the sort of starburst red shapes from her flowers with some more collage cutouts. And then I came in and did some scribbling and I had laid in some collage paper in the background. Now I decided that the collage paper in the background was a wee bit busy. So I came in with some tight and buff fluid acrylic and that's an opaque color that's slightly off white. And that allowed me to push back some of this text in the background. And then I also added some blue, pale blue watercolor. And I picked up some scribbling and some shapes of the red. And I love that spread. And I also love that I left some brown craft around the edges and the very fun things that I used uh, as my collage elements. Um, so the next one, this is one of the circular pieces that's separate. I used a big old cancellation mark and made it the center of a flower on this circular one. And then this is so much fun. Here I have Douglas MacArthur doing violin practice while his cat sits and watches. And for this one, sometimes um, I'll actually, I took a water soluble graphite crayon. You could use a marker, but I use graphite because this is sort of gray. And I just brought his leg over the stamp and his foot over the stamp so as to integrate it a little bit more so the cat didn't look like he was just plopped right on top. But I love this because his head and shoulders are the right size and I've got them at the right angle. And that's key to making it look sort of fun and silly is to get the head the right size and to line the shoulders up. Um, although it covered up a little bit of the violin, you still have all the information of the violin and that's no big deal. So that was a, a totally fun one. So this is tons of fun with postage stamps, isn't it? And I have had boxes of postage stamps around here forever. You may remember my mixed media airmail art workshop uh, online uh, this year was a um, series of birds on post U.S. P.S. themed backgrounds, so postage stamps, letters, um, addressed envelopes, uh, cancellation marks, that sort of things, and then little birds on top. So um, I am thinking that I'll probably release that online course again in 2023. So um, if you're not on my mailing list, make sure you get on my mailing list so that you'll know about it when it becomes available. And I would be remiss if I didn't remind you that I have some fun things on my website. I have stickers fun stickers, lots of them. And I also have some brand new aprons. The aprons um, are beautiful. They're all new designs that I haven't had before. Um, they can be found on my shop, on my website. They are shipping priority mail. So if you need them for a gift, uh, quickly. Uh, they're coming priority mail and I appreciate your support of a working artist. And now let's get back to that journal. And then um, I did. I decided to leave this page blank as a little eye wash because this one is super de duper busy. This one I cut out a man and a woman out of the same nursery rhyme book. Um, I cut them out all the way around the edges and I put them on top of a bunch of collage um, and some glitter gel that I put down and they were hard to see. So I went in with a uh, watercolor, black watercolor and came around and gave them sort of a black vignette edge and then I brought that black sort of in a scribble out here uh, to sort of set them off the background. So they are lots of fun because again, his uh, shoulders line up 
and he's facing the right direction as the man underneath was, and she um, just lines up perfectly, and she looks very happy. So that was a lot of fun, and that, that was a little busy, but still a lot of fun. I wanted to have a lot of different versions of my stamp um, people in here, and I really enjoyed digging through the stamps and digging through the nursery rhyme book to find the, the material. And this is just my gel printed collage papers that I did in the background. And I feel like you could do a lot of that, uh, maybe with a bigger, so a bigger piece, uh, so without so much pattern, and then put these guys on top with something a little bigger. Um, that could be fun as well. So, and then on this little one, I thought this was fun. I extended the doodly drawing of this cat, and the cat is with the bird. So, you know how cats uh, and birds are best of friends. So, on the oval um, sheet, I put the cat, and then on the black square, I added the bird, and I extended the branches and added another bird. And I did that with my Posca PC1MR pen tip. This is a great tip uh, for that. It's it's fine um, and it draws a nice fine line and it's um, it's uh, really um, opaque so you can see how well it stands up off of the black. I think it would stand up really nicely off of the uh, brown craft as well um, but I love those little pages in there. So that's the prototype book so far, and I thought I would take you through making a version of the very first page, which was from the nursery rhyme. So let's come out a little bit here, out. And um, what I'm using then for my small desk space is I have this great little tiny uh, self-healing cutting mat because I don't want to cut on my nonstick craft mat. That's what I have on the table that um, all the paint and glue and stuff just wipes right off of. So I'm going to use this little tiny mat so that I can work in my small space and not have to clear off the rest of my desk that you can't see that's covered with stuff. Okay, so... Um, the little Polly Flinders poem is the one I decided to use. And um, it is going to fit on the six by six. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is, let's set the book aside. I'm going to line this up and make sure that I remember that I need to leave, leave room above her head for a stamp. And I don't wanna get anything important into the spine but I do want to try to leave room for the um, poem or part of the poem. So let's go with it about like this. And then I'm going to use a pencil and just trace to see where it's going to fall before I cut it. Okay, so I'm just tracing it with a, with a pencil. And then this gives me some room for the poem and the stamps, and I think it looks good on the page. If you don't like the way that it looks on the page, then your very best friend is the Pink Pearl Eraser for erasing graphite off of paper. This is a regular old Pink Pearl, but it's going to get all those pencil lines off if you decide to shift it and move it and um, you feel like you, you want to clean that up, okay? So I'm going to then set this aside, my template, and I'm going to put little Polly Flinders on my uh, craft mat and then I'm going to get a little ruler so I can try to keep this straight and let's make sure we stay on the, on the cutting mat and I'm using an X-Acto blade. Your best bet when you do things like this is to get a fresh blade so that it's not dull. You would be surprised a dull blade will chew up your edges and can just kind of ruin the project. So I always like to remind you to start with a new blade because odds are the blade that's in your knife has been used a few times. Okay, so we're going to... cut. All right, so then I'm just going to save that for the poem and set this aside. And now I want to adhere this to one of the pages of the disc bound journal, the six by six that I used 
uh, as the outline. So how am I going to do that? Well, I could use a glue stick or I could use fluid matte medium. But the problem with that is that sometimes I don't see any pencil marks around here that I need to erase. So I'm good uh, because sometimes that causes stuff to wrinkle, buckle. And you know what? We need to cut this shorter so it's not blocking the blocking the um, holes here. So let's put that about there. I think that'll do it. Yep. Okay. So um, you could use a glue stick or you could use the matte medium, but for the full page sheets, I do use the matte medium for the stamps and the smaller elements of collage that I glued down. And it's important to have the matte uh, which was tricky for me because I usually work with gloss. But it's important to have the matte because otherwise you end up with shiny spots where you glued your stamp on a matte paper and you just get a shiny spot where you glued your stamp. You don't want that to happen. So you're not seeing that in here. You're not even seeing the glue around here because I did it all with matte medium, okay? So, but the full page, getting that down without wrinkles or buckles or a big mess, I have found the easiest way to do that is with Joggles Sticky Stuff. It is basically six by six sheets of the material that is their double stick tape. So it's a giant sheet of double stick tape. It's the best thing since sliced bread, honestly. So I'm going to... Peel the sticky stuff at the edge here. And I'm removing it from the backing. Then I have sticky on one side and backing on the other. And I'm going to line it up just past those holes for the discs and press. Now, you have to cut off the end, so we're going to bring back the cutting mat and the sharp X-Acto blade, we're going to cut that right off, fold it in half, and set that aside. So now, we have a full sheet of sticky stuff. So now, the idea is we're just going to burnish the corner really well. And then we're going to peel the backing. And it's as easy as that. We're going to peel that backing. And we've got a full flood of basically double stick tape. How easy is that? Then we're just going to line this up with the outer corner and the outer edge. And press. So there we have it, and it is perfectly flat and no wrinkles and no buckles, perfectly flat and on there immediately, and it holds up against painting on it with water and anything you might add to the top so it's not going to cause the paper to buckle. So how fun is that? So now we're going to bring in, and this sticky stuff comes in a, a, a pack of... Um, I don't know how many sheets, but the six by six sheets, they come in a packet. So you can use them uh, for your for several of the full page backgrounds. But you, you'll notice in my book, I didn't do that on every page. I mixed it up. But for the ones you want to do a full page background and also for that envelope, I used it also for the envelope um, to get that down as well, uh, because I think that would have wanted to buckle, too. But it's nice and flat without a single wrinkle because of the sticky stuff sheet. Okay, so now we're going to bring out the fluid matte medium. And I'm using the same brush that I always use for collage. You can use whatever you have on hand. I like this brush because it has a rigid bristles and it will allow me to press everything down flat. So, um, so here are my options with all the postage stamp heads. I do not have another girl for this little girl. So I thought it would be kind of humorous to put a man on that little girl. Um, so I have, she's looking to the, uh, the left. So you can't get a, a, 
a head that's looking the other direction, uh, you have to find something that, that matches. And then I'm looking for a good color. So let's zoom in here for you. So I'm looking for a good color. So something that will go with this. So maybe blue or maybe something not blue, maybe like a bright, bright color. Um, that is too small of a head. Um, so, um, you know, or dark, but I thought a bright color, a light color might be fun, but you are going to be limited by the stamps that you have. So the one that I found that was kind of funny was this, um, maybe for here. This is Franklin Roosevelt and that's facing, that's exactly the right direction for that but it also could be kind of funny up here um it actually really goes with that uh let's see so or we have churchill we could put him up there he's got like the look on his face of her he looks a little serious so that would be kind of fun and we would line his shoulders up with her shoulders and look at that we would tip it and line it up and that looks great i love that so it's not super colorful because we're still in gray but it sure is fun and the shoulders line up and he's got a great expression so then i don't think i want to use this one because then we got a lot of gray although it is kind of funny um, and in the right direction, again, facing in exactly and almost exactly the right size. So we could do that. The other one I have that's kind of cool is um, this one. The head is too small, uh, but it does bring in some more color. But you know what? I think that I do like this one because it is the right, just about the right size, and I can get it at the right angle, and it's kind of funny to put in there. Or I could even tip it that way. And I could bring the bow back. I could bring a pen and bring the bow back. Some of the bow. Uh, if I put it right like that. Or forward. So anyway. It's not about lining it up and making it look perfect. It's supposed to look like you're, you know, whimsical having fun with it. So, okay. So I've decided that even though these are offering me no color. The ones that I had with color. The heads are too small. Uh, really, you know, the, we could do that, but I just think it's too small. It's not as fun. I think this has kind of got more of a sense of whimsy to it. So that's what I'm going to go with. So I'm going to start with Churchill and love the fact that that lines up on there so well, but her head is small and his head is big, but yet it, it looks perfect. So let's line the shoulders up here, tip it at the right angle. And then I'm going to put the matte medium over the top with pressure from the brush to glue it down flat. And the layer of matte medium over the top helps it because if the paper is wet only on the bottom side, that's what makes it want to buckle and wrinkle. So when you add moisture over the top and underneath, you're better, you're, you have better luck in it staying down flat. So then I'm going to put Roosevelt's head at the right angle of this girl without bringing his shoulder too far back and put that there and press. And then we're going to take the scissors, wherever they may be, and cut out the little Polly Flinders verse or some of it. Or we could even just use the, the little Polly Flinders headline. Um, we could stack that up. Uh, but I think it's kind of fun to say that she sat among the cinders. So I'm going to go with the smaller type so I can get more on there. And why they, oops, why they typeset it with this zigzag, I, I have no idea. But I just cut off the S, but that's all right. Uh, it's an odd... Um, lining up of the text but maybe that's what they did in this book to try to be creative okay so so little polly flinders sat among the cinders let's take some of this off so you can do this with any book i mean if you've got a book that's got some illustrations in it that are going to allow you to put the the stamps over it and make it kind of fun i mean you could go um thrifting and find a book you could go digging through your books um whoops 
Oh, that split. Okay, I'm going to try and cut this off. And then I think I'm going to put the other half of it over here. So this is a fun way to use your stamps and your books and your sense of humor. Um, truly. So let's see. Her mother came and... Let's cut that. And caught her. Oh, and whipped her little daughter. No wonder we don't read this stuff anymore. Wow. Uh, maybe we don't put that part in there. I don't know. How about if we take little daughter... Caught her little daughter. And then we can put Polly Flinders. And then we don't have to have such drama in there. And then Polly Flinders. Polly Flinders. I don't want to go over that hand, but we'll go like this that little angle that's okay okay so you know it's easy to do this right we're just gonna slide it off and glue it down and I like cutting up the um the lines because then we can put them at some fun angles so there you go now of course you could come in here with markers and embellish this a little bit um, I've got, uh, like I said, I've got that white Posca pen and I could, you know, make some, some marks on it. I'm going, of course I'm going over that matte medium. That's a little wet right now. So that's a drag. Uh, let's get this one. I've got some pink metallic here. So you can embellish the drawings however you want. You can add some watercolor to them. We could add some paint, uh, some watercolor. If I, you know, if I feel like there's not enough uh, color in there, I could add some watercolor, some other Posca pens, um, and bump up the color. Uh, it would be fun to do a border, I think. Uh, let's see. We could do a fun little border with circles and wiggly lines. You know, you can add some touches that make it into more of your own uh, page and more of your own creativity. But um, be sure to allow that matte medium to dry before you uh, draw over it because it will clog your pen, which is what it's doing to mine right now. So don't be in a hurry. That's the moral of the story. Okay, so there you have it. Um, lots of fun working in this journal. And like I said, when you're happy with the page and you're sure that you like it, you just decide where you want it. How fun is that? Um, where I want it in here. And for these short pages, you got to look at like, how does it, what shows with the other one? That would be a nice stack up, wouldn't it? Because this figure being way out to the edge. So you want to think about how it, you know, how it looks when they stack up with the short pages and you just put it on just like that. And then I've got this and that. How fun is that? That's a lot of fun the way that stacks up. So, well, I hope that I have inspired you to use your postage stamps and to find a little, um, a little joy and relaxation and therapy in getting yourself, um, absorbed in a small project that you can do one page at a time. on your desk or on the go. You could take one page and your bag of markers with you to the doctor's office and do your page and come home and put it in. Well, happy Friday and thank you for being here and thank you for sharing in my little project that brought me joy today, something just for me. I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I'll see you back here next week.